I'm Stephanie. We're here at Miami International Boat Show, and I'm here with Chris, and he's going to tell us a little more about how did Hell's Bay get its name. Hell's Bay is uh, actually a place deep in the Everglades. It's it, The old timers used to say it was hell to get into and hell to get out of, and so hence the name Hell's Bay, and a lot of boats and people couldn't get back there because of that. Uh, so we built a very lightweight boat that does not draft very much at all to be able to go back into some of those really fishy areas in the Everglades such as Hell's Bay and hence our name of our boat works is Hell's Bay Boat Works. Interesting, very really nice. And is there anything else special you'd like to tell us about the, the boats? Well, every one of our boats is a carbon Kevlar uh, vacuum bagged uh, construction. Uh, most of the materials we use don't really come from the boat building industry. They really come from the aerospace and, and the, they're a very strong but lightweight composite. Well, thank you, Chris. Appreciate it. Thank you. Hi, Kayla here again with TNA Fishing, and I'm here with wa at Watershed with Justin, and he's going to tell us a little bit about their products and what they have. They're actually really cool. I can't wait to show you guys. Let's check it out. Yeah, um, we're Watershed Dry Bags. We've been making bags for about 18 years. Um, we make everything in Asheville, North Carolina, so all U.S. made products. Um, basically, uh, we have a patented seal on our bags. It works like a big Ziploc. Okay. Um, unlike a Ziploc where you would just pull it straight apart, you actually kink it back like that, and then that pops open our bag. Oh, wow. Um, so basically, we close off the big hole that most bags you just have to roll over a bunch of times, um, seal it up like you would a Ziploc, and basically this is kind of our... You know, once it's sealed up, it is completely airtight and waterproof. Um, you know, won't bust open on you, anything like that. So completely airtight, waterproof. Uh, we're also doing um, some new mesh bags this year. Uh, we're using trampoline material instead of your typical mesh, so just really beefy bags. And what sets these aside from the like, normal duffel bags? Well, basically, um, you know, with our normal bags that we make, our, everything is waterproof. With these, these are water friendly. Water does run through, so this is going to be more for um, wetsuits, things like that, okay. anything that's um, already wet, you know, so it'll drain and breathe. And what would you say would be like your top seller? Like the um, our duffels have always been our staple bags. We've been doing the duffels for over 18 years now. Um, we do have a new product this year. Which I'll okay. Like. We've also um, recently come out with a, a waterproof iPad bag, oh, um, wow. actually nice. usable inside the bag. Um, completely, um, you know, same seal. Uh, this seal actually just recently got tested down to 600 feet submersion, which is kind of incredible, but uh, was tested in Japan by the Jams Tech facility. So it's which is kind of kind of cool stuff. But. Have you ever tested it yourself? Oh yes. Yeah. So, well, yeah, that was me. We do a lot of uh, fishing and, and kayaking. We were all whitewater raft guides that basically saw a need for better waterproof bags. Um, so we um, started making them on the banks of the Okoe River about 18 years ago, and then um, now we're on the banks of the French Broad River in Asheville, North Carolina. Very cool. Thank you, Justin. I can't wait to get one of these. Made in the USA. everyone, I'm Stephanie. I'm here with Scott from Tigris Outriggers. He's going to tell us some more about his product over here. Today we're showing off our electric outrigger, telescoping fiberglass carbon fiber outrigger. It's new for this year at the Miami Boat Show. So come on by, take a look, and I can explain more to you. It's made in the USA, all 316s, stainless hardware, and we make them here. <laughs> Very good. Well, thanks, Scott. <laughs> And I believe I found a bullseye here at the show talking with Eddie from Sea Hunter. Tell me a little bit about this boat. Well, we build a carbon fiber and Kevlar fishing boat, and it's one of the most popular fishing boats here in South Florida. And little by little, we're becoming very popular worldwide. We've shipped boats to Australia, Spain, the Middle East, and we're debuting our new 45-foot center console here at the show. 
And for people that don't know about carbon Kevlar, can you explain a little bit about that to me? Well, Kevlar and carbon fiber are used in our boats to make them indestructible, basically. They're the safest fishing boat on the water. They're made to be unsinkable, unbreakable, and very fuel efficient. Perfect. And how much does something like this go for? Our price points range from the mid $200,000 range way up. You can get into some pretty high price points for center consoles with our boats, but we try to build the best center console in the market. So you have something all around for a little bit of everybody? Yeah, we try, we try to build something for the high-end user, something that is going to be owned by a fisherman who's had several other boats and wants to build his dream fishing boat at this point. So pretty much this is a bulletproof, unsinkable boat that you build for low-end to high-end? Yep, that's exactly what we're trying to do. Perfect. Thank you so much, Eddie. I'm here with David, and he's going to discuss more about this beautiful, high-class fishing boat that we're on. This is the Grady White, and um, can you tell us a little more about it? Be glad to. Uh, this is the Freedom 375, which is the largest of our Freedom line. Uh, we have Freedoms from 20 feet up to this, this 37. Uh, we named this line Freedom because these boats in, in this configuration really give you the freedom to do anything you want to do on the water. Right. If it's family events you want to do, if it's fishing that you want to do, if it's cruising, if it's a deli cruise and just you know cruising the waterway and having dinner or lunch, you can do that too. It's just a wonderful boat to do anything you want to do. So that's the na reason for the name Freedom. This largest one is so feature packed, we can walk through the various things you can do. And one, things, one of the things I do want to emphasize, uh, we do come from a fishing background and a family fishing background. Sometimes people look at these boats and they look at it as a cruising boat, and it is a wonderful cruising boat, but also a wonderful fishing boat. So as we go through and look at the various parts of the boat, I'll talk about all the aspects of it, but I will emphasize fishing a little bit just to make people aware that it's a good fishing boat too. All right, excellent. Excited to hear about it. We're here in the cockpit of the Freedom 375, and the first thing you'll notice is just the expansive space. And when I mentioned fishing earlier, there's plenty of room for anglers to fish back here. You'll notice rod holders on the gunnel side. There's six of them. Uh, we'll look in a minute. There's rod storage overhead as well. There's a built-in fish box. And Stephanie, if you'll open that there. Sure. There's a built-in live well. That's a raw water live well there. Let's see, it kind of, there you go. There we go. Uh, the fish box has dividers, so you can divide it into three sections if you want to. It's actually a freezer box, too, so you can, you can set the temperature without ice, just like a, a freezer chest in your house. Wow. The partitions that you see are removable, so you can have a large box, or you can have it divided into two, two spaces or three. These boxes also, as I emphasize fishing, are great for dry storage. If you want to you know, go on a cruise or you're going, say, over to the Bahamas or something, you have a lot of gear to pack away, it's great dry storage to keep all your stuff dry. If you look in the back of the boat, you see our lounge seat here. That is an option. But for the fishermen, we have a fold-away fold seat uh, that opens the cockpit completely up so you don't have that obstruction to the transom. Uh, so you can open, open it up for the fishing as well. If you look over here on the port side of the boat, again, for cruising, we have a seat that comes out. So if you have the lounge on the port on the starboard side, now you have a double lounge, one on the port side as well. Above the lounge, we have another storage area that comes out. This could be where you display your hors d'oeuvres, that sort of thing. There's storage down below. So you can put things in there that maybe you want to serve later or mm -hmm. knives and plates and forks and all that kind of thing. Hide all your good Close stuff. Away. Yeah, hide all your good <laughs> stuff away in there. And speaking of hiding things, this drawer is pretty discreet here. So when your seat's out, you can store valuables there. Then you can close the seat back, and then your valuables are put away out of sight, out of mind, so prying eyes can't uh, uh, sort of know what you have there. Overhead, if you'll notice this, we have a sunshade. This is retractable, covers the whole cockpit. Wow. And then as it retracts, it opens it up to the sun, gets it out of the way for the fishermen. Excellent. This particular model, if you look over here, is equipped with a, a side entry door. You see how that works? <laughs> <laughs> So in, in the water, it's good for diving and swimming and doing water sports, but at the dock, if you have a floating dock, it's also uh, good for easy entry to the boat. Right. Move forward a little bit, still in the cockpit. We have a long way to go with this boat. We have a full galley, electric grill, refrigerator below that, hot and cold fresh water, and lots of storage. You see the stainless drawers here uh, for storage as well. So that's the cockpit, and we can move to other areas now too. Yeah, it's very functional. Love it. Very nice. That's a lot of covers too, it's a lot of being yeah, on the sun.
Can you tell us a little more about the helm area over here? Sure, be glad to do that. Uh, first thing you'll notice is the big lounge seat here. There's a lot of room. You can sit several people here. You see the table in place, and it's a good place to serve food. But if you don't want the table, it's easily stowable. You don't have to put it anywhere. It kind of stays there. And then if you want it back, it's just as easy to bring it back and put it in place. Fabulous. Very nice. So you right. see the seating, you see cup holder storage, you have your stereo here. If you want to watch a little TV, watch a movie, we have the TV that stores into the hardtop here. Uh, while I'm on the hardtop, I'll talk about storage here a little bit. This is netted storage. There's a cavity in there, plenty big enough for life jackets and throw cushions and, and safety gear and that kind of thing. The things the Coast Guard might want to see if right. they want to stop and check things. It's easy to show them. Yeah. You see rod storage overhead here. Right. As you move forward, there's even a sunroof. It's and really nice. Operatable from the helm. You can open and close that there. There's a wow. screen here. Wow. So you can keep bugs and debris out. Yeah. And there's also a shade that covers the whole wow. thing to keep all the light out. Get there's options. A, there's a lot yeah. of things to do there. That's great. If you look at the helm, kind of command central here, one of the things you'll notice is we do have bolster seats. Uh, we've made it a point on our bolster seats to have it where the captain can have his up to stand and drive, but if the passenger wanted to sit, the passenger side could be down so he could sit or stand like the captain. Personal storage here. You'll see the array of switches, great visibility from the helm. This, the, the electronics area is big enough for 15 inch screens, so the, the newest electronics will fit there very well. You'll see the protection here with the windshield going all the way to the top. Uh, the idea there is you're not fumbling with a lot of canvas, you're dry, the wind's not in your face, nice comfortable place for all of your crew and your family to be. Uh, and you can be here and the folks can be fishing out back yeah. and you kind of have two, two different settings that are going on. That's great. All right, David, I noticed a few cabins around here. Can you tell us more about those? Sure. There, there are two cabins on the Freedom 375. One is a cabin. The other's ahead. I'm going to go through the cabin first. You open the door here. And if you look down below, there's expansive seating. You see the table in place there. So it's air conditioned down there. So if you wanted to dine or have a little snack down there, that would be a lot of fun. Uh, the table does fold out of the way to open up more space. And if you'll notice, the um, bed area extends across. So with the table up and the bed area extended fully, you have sleeping capacity for two there. And there's actually a quarter berth down below behind this area. So you can sleep three people in this cabin. The name right. of the game here is versatility and convertibility. We can do a lot right. of different things in a very small space. You'll notice cabinet, uh, cabinet up top for storage as well. And I think I mentioned it, but just in case, it is air conditioned down below, so yeah. it'll be nice and comfortable when you're down there. Definitely. Great. We'll move up to the head, which is on the other side in the other console. Open this door. You look down below, we have Corian countertops. We have a shower curtain that goes across here that sections the shower all forward. Uh, you'll notice the floor pan drains to keep the aft part of the, the head cabin uh, dry. You see the Corian sink. Uh, you see the uh, vanity mirror there with lights on each side. So if you want to go in there and really, uh, if you're, this boat is good for going out and doing a lot of things, you can do recreational things and be in the water. Maybe you want to go to a restaurant later. It's a great place to go in and clean up and get yourself straightened out before you go in and have a nice dinner on shore. On the aft part, on the aft part of the um, head cabin, you'll see our ACDC panel. We have two 30 amp services on this boat. It, has, it comes equipped with an AKW generator as well because there are a lot of fun features on this boat that you can use uh, that require AC power. And uh, we have plenty of it to go around for the air conditioners and for the roof and for the different things that open and close here and, and, and make this boat a wonderful, versatile boat. Hi, David. Can you tell us a little more about the bow up here? Yeah, it's very spacious. I, I don't think I've mentioned this boat is a 13 foot two beam. So it's a nice wide boat and that translates forward into a large bow area. Now you'll notice all the seating and that's really the, the main function here. There's plenty of room to, to lounge as, as you see. Notice the split tables. Uh, the, the fun thing about that is it leaves an opening where you can pass all the way through to the bow. The anchor locker is here forward with the windlass below the hatch so you can get to that very easily. There are controls up here but also controls at the helm. The other thing the split tables do for you is with seating around here, and we did this yesterday at the show, we had six people seated here, yeah. and I pointed out that four of the six could get up and come and go as they please from the table without disturbing anyone. 
If That's we had a good larger point, right. table in, in, in the center yeah. and six people, you'd have four of them trapped by two. That's so true. it makes a lot makes for a lot of versatility. These tables do go down, uh, and there's a cushion to go on them when they go down. And if you'll turn and kind of lounge, you'll see that you can put your legs out and be comfortable. Yeah, I can do the same. We can lounge four people right. in the space that we have without any filler in the front to make the versatility of coming and going uh, remain very easy. We have cup holders here, cup holders in the table. There's a stereo control on the porch side there so yeah. the people up here can control the sound if right. they're not getting the sound that they need up here. Yeah. There's also 12 volt outlets for charging iPads, iPhones, anything of 12 volt nature for your music and that kind of thing that you may have on board. All the necessities, great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, fabulous, it's beautiful. Thank you. Okay. I'm with Chris from Everglades Boats, and he's about to tell me a little bit about this boat, and I think you're going to like it. It's pretty interesting. This is a 243 Everglades. It's one of our most popular models. Great thing about this boat is it's a three-way hybrid. It's not just a bay boat, as it appears from the exterior. This is an offshore boat. It's an inshore boat and a family boat. You can run this boat in three-foot seas all day long and run offshore, use your outriggers that we have installed, sight fish from your upper station. If it's really bad offshore, you can run it in 20 inches of water. In the back country, use your bow mount trolling motor. Power pole, we've installed a, a jack plate on this particular unit. And uh, if you're interested in some fun with the family, this boat has a host of different options that you'll be able to use for that. Well, we'll start with the back of the boat, which at this point appears to be a regular traditional fish platform. But uh, when you look closer, you'll see that we have the flip up chairs which are very deep very comfortable we have the handrails here oversized stainless steel cup holders you do have your bait well with friction hinge starboard side seat just the same as a port side seat moving forward this boat is actually equipped with a ski tow pylon on the t-top very few manufacturers in the industry build a t-top that's strong enough to tow a ski or a wakeboard or a tuber from, but we build this specially for tubing, family sports, wakeboard and skiing, things of that nature. Um, this is our patent pending leaning post. And what's unique about this is that in this position, it's a leaning post. When I flip this forward, it turns into a seat. And at the same time, the footrest pops out. So it turns into a nice bench. This 243 is equipped with a head oversized head with a porta potty the boat comes standard with a plexiglass three-sided enclosure and the unique part about this feature is that the windshield slides up and down on command manually you've got a nice big bench seat forward of the console we've got a huge bow area which can be used as a casting platform but the way we've got it equipped here is with bow cushions so you can spend a day lounging in the sun. Like yeah, plenty of space to lounge around. Um, further forward is another fishing feature, which is the Minn Kota Riptide RT-80, which is uh, removable, so it can be taken off for a, a day of fun or a day in the blue water or used to, for a day in the backcountry. Thanks again, Chris. This is Kayla here at the Miami International Boat Show with TNA Fishing.